Wait, are these guys doctors? <laughs> oh! This is the best part about GTA. You fly, the physics of the game is incredibly real, but then the medicine of the game is absolutely false. Hey, I'm Dr. Mike Varshavsky, but many of you know me as Dr. Mike. I make YouTube videos where I try and educate people about health, have a little fun on the side, but I'm also a practicing board certified family medicine doctor, treating everything from your common injuries to diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, pretty much anything. But that's what makes my job incredibly fun. And today, I'm going to be evaluating video game injuries. When I think about video game injuries, I always think about things being extra exaggerated. Allows your imagination to sort of run wild. And as a doctor, I have to sort of wrangle our imaginations back in and explain, can this really happen? If it were to happen, how bad would this be? Could this person survive? And in most of the times, it's not going to happen. This is so violent. This is not how my patients would react if they're getting hit like this. I don't understand how all of this blood is just popping out of the person's body. If we're gonna have a cut, then it makes sense that the person's bleeding. But if they're just getting hit, why are they, why is their blood splattering all over the place? You see this person getting hit and they're getting hit what seems to be in the chest, but without even having a cut, there's like splatter coming out of their chest. That's not realistic. In order to have some sort of blood come out of the body, there needs to be a break in the skin. Unless the person breaks your skin, what happens is you'll develop a hematoma, which is a bruise, and you have bleeding internally. So I will say, if you're getting hit in the head this much, you can develop a hematoma, that same bruise, the bleeding inside your body that I was talking about, but it can happen inside your cranium, which is your skull. And why is that dangerous? Well. If I have bleeding in, say, my arm, my arm will swell and make room for that bleeding. But in your skull, since your skull is a fixed bone, it actually can't expand. And when that happens, you build up pressure, and that pressure is not good for your brain. Oh. 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 First of all, I don't know how strong these guys are that they're punching through rocks. That's got to hurt. And I feel like you might break a, a bone or two inside your hand. There's actually a, a common fracture that happens when you punch with a closed fist. It's called a boxer's fracture. Ah, it's breaking of the bone right here. Horrible. Wait, are these guys doctors? <laughs> oh! Ah, that looks like an Escalade. So these are the worst types of injuries because you're going from a high rate of speed to zero very quickly. And you know what happens when you bring something that's moving fast to a complete halt? Momentum happens. So all of their organs move forward, hit the body, the brain goes forward, and it can actually get bruised and have major damage to it on the front area. You're not getting up from that. Look at the car damage. If that's the damage to a metal car, what happens to the frail human being that was just going 30 miles an hour on a scooter that flew off? And they're not wearing helmets. I already disapprove because they're speeding and they're driving on the wrong side of the road. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, and the car goes flying. Oh. <laughs> this is the best part about GTA. You fly, the physics of the game is incredibly real, but then the medicine of the game is absolutely false. Look at this car. It's mangled. But then this superhuman is just gets up like nothing happened. If your car goes off a hill like this and you fly out of the car, first of all, you're not surviving that. Your neck is breaking, your spinal cord is getting severed, you're bleeding everywhere. Oh, oh, oh. That looks like a belly. Oh my God. The car just crushed that construction worker. Oh my God, and he hits. <laughs> <laughs> in the face. That's a Bentley, so it's probably a heavy car. 4,000 pound Bentley is gonna fall on you. You're not gonna get up and get ready to get hit in the face again. You're gonna have crush injuries, and crush injuries are quite dangerous because when you damage muscles, you damage bone, there's all sorts of issues that can arise. Infection, low blood pressure from not enough blood circulating. If you have a crush injury of a bone, you can have something known as a fatty embolism, where literally a piece of fat leaves the bone and starts traveling throughout your blood vessels and can get trapped in the lungs and the heart and the brain, and that's obviously deadly. Oh. 
Oh my God. All right, I'm gonna have to pause on that. This insane wrestling-like move just got this gentleman's ribs broken. That's pretty realistic. Like you got lungs there. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, the rib number is a little bit off, but that's okay considering it's a game. <laughs> they even made the back ribs break. What I will say is incredibly unrealistic is ribs don't shatter upon impact like this. I mean, unless the impact is absolutely crazy, but generally what happens is you get a fracture. Most of the time it's a hairline fracture, but if you have a displaced rib, which can put a sharp angle there and it could puncture your lung, that can cause a pneumothorax. That's a collapsed lung. That's that's really bad. So you want to act fast in those situations. Oh, oh, oh. I watch those crazy videos on YouTube of where chiropractors are doing adjustments. But the way this looked, it looks like some of those YouTube videos where it's like, bah, and they're just absolutely just breaking stuff. Oh. So the bone bre breaking there is called a jawbone. Medically, we call it the mandible. And what happens is it doesn't even look like it broke. It looks like it dislocated. And you can imagine how painful that be because you have ligaments and muscles attached to it in order for it to move. And when all that breaks, all that tears, that, that's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. That's a good anatomical description of what a jaw dislocation would look like. Oh, 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 that looks like a frontal bone fracture. So the frontal bone is obviously the front part of your cranium. In real life, for that to happen, you're gonna need to have massive trauma. Think car accident, going from 70 miles an hour to zero, hitting a wall, and then airbag not coming out or something. Oh, 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 oh. See, it doesn't make much sense to me because if you have a shattered skull like this, you're done. That's it, you're not functioning. Oh. Oh, so that chop right there, that went right to the cervical vertebrae. That's the vertebrae that protect your spinal cord in your neck. There's seven cervical vertebrae in there, and when they got chopped, they shattered bad. If they shattered, that means the person's hitting with so much force that they could sever your spinal cord. And if that happens, everything that's connected by your nervous system down below that level is no longer gonna be functioning. Oh, oh, oh. Injuries like this happen. People get into fights, they use objects, they strike each other, it happens. If you come into the hospital like this right away, the first thing I'm gonna do is order a STAT CT scan, which is a CAT scan in order to figure out, A, is there bleeding in the brain? Do we need to act quickly? Two, is there any kind of fracture that can pose a threat to you? Like we talked about displaced ribs that can cause a puncture in the lung. If you don't correct a lot of these issues quickly, you can lose your life. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> The sound effect sounds like he's getting slapped, but it looks a lot more violent than that. Oh. See, the way that he fell and the arm rotated in like that, I feel like that's gonna be the biggest issue. Like, yeah, he got slapped around a little bit, he fell down the stairs, but the internal rotation of that shoulder and going past the normal range of motion, guess what's gonna happen? Tearing of your rotator cuff. You're gonna need to get surgery, long recovery time. Oh, oh, slow motion. Oh, so I'm not a gun expert. The way these people are flying back, it looks like they're getting hit by like a 12 gauge shotgun. <laughs> when a patient experiences a gunshot wound, right away the first thing we do, make sure that they're getting enough fluids through an IV. If we need to get a blood transfusion right away, we start a major bleeding uh, protocol and we get them to a level one trauma center as fast as humanly possible and let the ER doctors and trauma doctors step in and hopefully save that person's life. Oh, what is that? That doesn't even look human. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, that looked like a burn. I don't know if this thing is human or not, but burns are obviously dangerous because you can get a whole host of issues happening with a burn. Dehydration, infection. When you get a burn, you get something known as a contracture, which is where the skin sort of scars and contracts on itself. That could be quite painful on its own. Limit your range of motion. I feel bad for that creature, whatever it was. It got sliced and then burned. That's not a good way to go. Oh no. Oh my God. That was an innocent person. Jesus. Oh my God. Anytime you have a knife wound, that's incredibly dangerous. Why? Because this gentleman did not insert a knife and leave it. And when you do that, you actually cause more damage. Because if you 
get stabbed by an object. The idea is not to take it out until you have emergency services around you in order to perform any kind of procedures that may be necessary. Keeping that object, if it's a knife, a stick, whatever, inserted into you, you actually put pressure on the blood vessels and reduce the amount of bleeding that's occurring. Well, that was not surprising. A lot of these injuries are exaggerated. The characters are superhuman. They can seemingly survive anything. In reality, humans, while we are resilient, we're still fragile. And if we're gonna be falling off a cliff and experiencing significant amount of g-forces we're gonna have injuries if you want to see more of my videos check out my youtube channel dr mike just remember doctor spelled out as always stay happy and healthy